Adjusting the gear ratios on your bike isn't something that you're gonna do all that often. If, however, you've just got a new bike like me, or you're going to a specific event or race, changing those gear ratios is something that you might wanna consider doing to try and optimize your bike setup, be that for going faster or for going slow uphill. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. In case you missed the epic coast to coast ride that Cy and I did a few weeks ago, Here's the wonderful bike that we were riding. It's the new Canyon Grail, and I've been lucky enough to keep hold of it. But seeing as here in the UK, winter time is coming and all the sort of off-road stuff is getting pretty muddy, I've actually been riding this bike a little bit more on the road. However, what I do want to do to tweak it and make it slightly better suited for that is change the gear ratios that's on the bike. So to do that, I'm going to change the cassette and we're going to go to a smaller cassette size, which is reducing the overall range of the cassette, but having the ratios closer together. So that is what I'm going to show you how to do. So make a start, shall we? When it comes to changing any gearing component on your bike, of course, the first thing you're going to need are those parts. So in this instance, I'm changing my cassette, but because I'm going to a smaller size cassette, I can just reduce the length of my chain. If you were going to larger chain rings or a larger cassette to change your ratios, you're going to need a new chain as well. In addition to that, I'm going to need things like a chain tool because I might shorten the chain ever so slightly. I'm going to need some quick link pliers to join the chain together. I'm also going to need a wrench to hold my lock ring tool, a chain whip tool to hold the cassette steady, selection of hex keys or Allen wrenches, and um, well, of course, this little tool which is designed to allow me to take the lock ring of the cassette off. First step of the job is to remove the rear wheel from the bike. To do this, I've actually got the bike placed into a work stand, but this is the sort of job that you could do with your bike lent up against the floor, but you're gonna to have to accept it's a little bit more of a fiddly process if you do that. To take the back wheel out of this bike, six mil hex wrench, away we go. Undo that. So this is a cassette that's fitted to the bike at the moment. On the smallest sprocket, it's an 11, and it goes all the way up to a 34 tooth on the largest, whereas what I'm gonna fit is an 11, and then only goes up to a 32. So I'm reducing that lowest gear range that I've got ever so slightly, but the jumps between the two gears are gonna be ever so slightly closer. So it's gonna mean the bike's a little bit nicer to ride on the road, which is what I'm doing at the moment. Now, in order to take the cassette off, we're gonna to need to have our lock ring tool. We're gonna to need to place that into the wheel, get our chain whip, put it over the cassette like so, so that when we push down, we're going against the free hub, so that when we then use our wrench placed over the lock ring tool, we're able to put force opposing sides to do the lock ring and get it undone, rather than just turn the cassette around. So I have to stand up and put my weight behind it. Now that I've got the lock ring removed, I can set that to one side. And then if you're careful, you can pinch the whole cassette together and then gently wiggle it while sliding it off of the free hub body. And if you hold it together with a little bit of force, it will stay as one piece. But if you're not careful, you're gonna slip and it's all gonna go into not quite a thousand pieces, but lots of different bits. So the free hub body on the wheel has got teeth and lines machined into it. Those lines match up with what's machined on the inside of your cassette. Now, whilst this cassette isn't brand new, because it's one that I literally just had spare in the cupboard, it's still got plenty of life left in it. And I've also put it back on the little plastic sleeve, which most cassettes come with when they're new out of the factory. Now, this is important here because it makes installing the cassette a lot, lot easier and simpler. The lock ring and the smallest sprocket can simply be removed from this little piece of plastic. And then what we're gonna do is line up this small plastic tab with the larger gap in the free hub body, place it together, pull this little tab out, and the whole thing will slide on in one go, and life will be a breeze. Let me show you.
So that's the cassette slid on, making life a lot easier with this plastic sleeve. The last sprocket put in place using the correct splines to line it up, and then the lock ring holding it all in together. Now, if you look on almost all lock rings, they have a torque rating on there. Now, Shimano recommends 40 Newton meters for tightening up this lock ring, and that is what I suggest you do too. Cassette done, fit the wheel back into the bike. Carefully line the chain up on the sprockets. Once we've got this wheel back in place, we can move on to the next section of the job, which is checking the indexing as well as getting the chain length correctly and also adjusting this B-limit screw. So that's... Before making any changes to the indexing or the B-limit screw on the rear derailleur, the first thing we want to get right is the chain length. Now, technically, I don't need to make any adjustments here because uh, the cassette has actually gone smaller in size. It isn't going to mean that there's a vast change and there's no risk of the derailleur getting stretched further than what it really should do. But in order to show you what you would have to do if you had gone to a larger cassette or made changes to the front chain rings, I'm going to show you how to remove a link out of your chain and then that way it's going to take up a little bit of slack and perhaps make this chain a little bit closer to optimal setup for this bike. The first step is locate your quick link, which we've got here, and then using our quick link pliers, we can pinch that together and undo it. Because this chain is almost at its optimal length, I want to remove as few links as possible. Now, because I'm using a quick link, I need to end with an inner plate section like this. So I need to go along to the next pin, which is going to be this one here. So place it into the chain tool, line it up, gradually wind some pressure into the chain tool and drive that pin out. And keep winding the tool through until that pin is all the way out and then back the tool off. That way you can see there's a little section of chain that we've removed to get the chain a little bit more suitable for the gear ratios that are now on this bike. Now that the chain's ever so slightly shorter, I can join the two sides back together using the quick link pliers and that is it ready to go to move on to the next section of this job, which is focusing on the back of the rear derailleur here. So because we've changed our cassette size, we're going to need to adjust the B-limit screw, which changes the position here, how high and low the derailleur sits. If the derailleur sits too low, the gear indexing and shifting will not be very precise, and if it sits too high to the cassette, well, you run the risk of the pulley wheel contacting the cassette teeth and it'll make all sorts of mess and your gears won't work effectively. So in order to adjust that, we need to shift the bike into the small chain ring, which it already is, and then up onto the top of the cassette. To make changes to what's known as the B-limit screw, it's located at the back of the derailleur and touches up against the mech hanger. So we can do that by turning it inwards and outwards, depending on where you want to change the position. So by unwinding the B-limit screw, if you look closely, in this area down here, we're making the top pulley wheel sit closer to that cassette, which is kind of what we want to achieve. The closer it is, before it touches, the more accurate and precise the shift is going to be. If you had moved to a larger cassette, so the opposite of what I've done, you'd have to adjust this B-limit screw to make the derailleur sit further out and lower to clear that cassette. So, that is looking pretty good to me, I think. Lovely. So yeah, we've reduced that gap down to get more accurate shifting. Okay, so if you wanna finally give everything a quick check over and also a quick explainer how to apply the principles to get the chain length correct, which you can use on all sorts of different bikes, is you want the chain to be long enough to allow you to go into the large chain ring and the large cassette sprockets but not have the derailleur stretched as far as possible. If the derailleur goes too far stretched, you're gonna damage it and all sorts of trouble like that. But you also wanna have your chain short enough so that when you shift into these gears, at the bottom of the cassette, you haven't got a slack chain here and the derailleur is taking up some of that slack chain. Go by those two principles, with a little bit of trial and error, you'll get it right. So we're in the large chain ring, large sprocket, and the derailleur has still got scope to move a little bit more if needed, which is a good place to be in. With the bike in a small chain ring and the smallest sprockets available, you can see that the derailleur is putting some tension onto the chain. 
if you could see that your chain was slack like this, is an indicator that it's too long. So we've got our new cassette fitted, we've got our chain shortened ever so slightly, we've adjusted the B-limit screw. What we need to do now is our final check to run all the way through the gears and see if we need to make any changes to the indexing. I don't think we do because the cassettes are pretty much swapped like for like apart from the ratios, but at this stage you can check everything over and if you need to make any adjustments to the indexing, now is when you would do it. And for me, that pretty much finishes the job that we need to do. I've now got a bike with closer ratio cassette, which should be better suited to riding on the road. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative and helpful and it's given you a bit more insight into how to do jobs such as this on your own bike. But for me, I've still got a few more jobs and tweaks I want to do to the setup of this. First thing being, I want to get my hands on a set of the mud guards for it because the weather is rubbish outside. But please do let me know in the comments section down below what kind of gear ratios you find optimal for your riding and your setup, let me know. And also, if you want to support what we do, please subscribe to GCN Tech and hit that bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on our future videos.